everyone, I'm Sarah with the West Lincoln Public Library, back again for another book review for the month of February. Bit of a change of location today, but that will not deter me. I am so excited to tell you guys about the book that I chose for this month. We are talking witchcraft and women's rights, spells, and suffragy. May I introduce Alex E. Haro's The Once and Future Witches. Uh, she wrote The Ten Thousand Doors of January, and which was phenomenal. If you loved her previous work, you're going to love this one. Oh man. All right, where do I begin? I had initially chosen a different book for my month, but it did not turn out as exciting as I had hoped. And with only a few days to publish this review, I was worried when I chose a book that's decent size, would I have time to finish it all? Oh, I made time. Oh, I made time to finish this book. It took my breath away. The moment that you start on the first chapter and it introduces you to our main characters, you can't put it down. It was like there was a spell on the book itself. It was incredible. Now, uh, this is based in 1893 in a place called New Salem, where witchcraft, sin, any immoral deed, completely forbidden. It is meant out to be a town in which everything is good and wholesome and striving for new and better beginnings. Our main characters are three sisters, Beatrice, Agnes, and James Juniper, who were all originally raised away from the city and taught ways of witchcraft by their grandmother Mags after their mother died at childbirth. It creates a world that feels so genuine, the magic feels real. It, she worked very hard to create a system, Haro did, that makes you feel like this magic is deeply connected to nature. It's not like she's just pulling it out of a hat and being like, yes, I can do anything. This spell can do whatever I want it to. No, there are very strict limits and bases in magic, and it makes it feel like a real system, like any kind of law or system that you would read in a currency or anything like that. I was incredibly impressed. I had absolutely no trouble believing in it. Now, originally, we start off the book from James Juniper's perspective. Uh, she's the youngest of the three, and she's coming to the city in order to essentially flee from a crime that she's committed. And along the way, she finds her two sisters. And they reconnect after being apart for several years and unintentionally spark a witchcraft rising, uh, the revival of witchcraft in this town while also working to help the suffrage movement, gaining the women's rights to vote. Which sounds completely opposite. Like, how could these ideas, one uh, based in history and politics, the other based in uh, mythology and magic, ever coincide? But this book is tense with frustration the entire way through. You can feel women you can feel the women's anger throughout this whole book of being denied something that they know is rightfully theirs, whether it be the right to vote, the right to themselves and their own power, or the right to witchcraft. And they mesh beautifully. Like, wow, I had no idea I was actually going to vote for, like, completely support the idea that women should be allowed to vote, yes, and also allowed to practice witchcraft. That was not what I thought I was going to take away from the end of this book, uh, which by the ending, Oh, the ending is phenomenal. Uh, but no, obviously, we're not going to talk about that. So, The Once and Future Witches is written so elegantly. Alex e. Haro never fails uh, to impress when it comes to her writing style. She is absolutely enchanting. She's beautifully exhilarating. The location, the story is interwoven throughout. A lot of the tall tales Grimm's fairy tales are mentioned throughout the book in little uh, pockets here and there, which are really nice. If anyone who loves the good old classic fairy tales, you're not going to find the classics. You're going to find Harrow's spin on them, which is really fun. Um, there are some absolutely gorgeous spells that Harrow has included in here at the beginning of every chapter. And I love that. I love that it lets you kind of feel included in on the magic aspect. Uh, the first one is one of my favorites on chapter one. A tangled web she weaves when she wishes to deceive. A spell to distract and dismay, requiring cobweb gathered on new moon and a pricked finger. 
It's a great little snippet into the universe, and I find that Haro really worked hard to make sure that the audience does not feel left out on the magic portion of this book, because she created a whole new world for it. It's definitely would have been simple if she just let us feel lost and made sure that the sisters were the only ones experiencing the magic throughout the book, but no, definitely feel included. Um, I could not get over the realistic sibling relationship. It is strained in the book. Initially, James Juniper has not seen her older sisters in very many years, and she's been left alone to deal with their abusive father by herself after Mags, their grandmother, passes away, and uh, she doesn't know where to turn. She goes to the city to flee, uh, and she's not really going to look for her sisters. She's just trying to get away, and fate brings them all back together again, and they start a revolution, whether they meant to or not. It is such a gorgeous tale of family and finding one's identity and finding one's place and I loved it. I'm so, I know I'm, I'm going on a record right now but characters that feel like people really sell me and oh each one of them did. Agnes, Beatrice, James Juniper or Juniper as she prefers to go by all felt real. They felt like real human women who were struggling to find their place, struggling with the unfairness in the world. Everything that had been rightfully theirs was taken from them. And they saw such injustice and they had to act. While they all planned initially to do things for themselves, they all had their own motivations, they all came together in the end. And oh, oh man, it was, it was gorgeous. Um, I honestly was left at so many points where I thought I knew where this book was going to go and Harrow proved me wrong so many, so many times. I could not get enough of this. Um, I recommend this to anyone, anyone who loves magic or mythology or the supernatural or the paranormal, they will get such a kick out of this book. But also, anyone that has a love for history, this may be Haro's original universe and New Salem may obviously be a fictional town, but it's still very directly tied to the women's suffrage movement in, and it's really well depicted. It's an incredible clash of history and fantasy. I was very surprised. The Eastwood sisters are extremely talented and They've been compressed and told that who they are is wrong for so many years and they need to reconnect. They need to find each other again to realize that this isn't true, that they are exactly who they need to be, that they have always had strength to make things right and to overcome their odds together. And it's, it's a really beautiful story of sibling togetherness and I... Ooh, I loved it. It is a story of equality, of women battling for equality in so many different subjects. And I, I couldn't get enough. I'm going to be rereading this as soon as I finish this recording. I am going to uh, probably sit down and just, oh, it's going to take me a while to read something new after this. I'm still so deeply engrossed in the Harold's universe and I will be for a while. Um, it also can... I just shout out this cover art. It is gorgeous. It's so, it's like got a very old fashioned uh, line art style to it, but the shading is beautiful. Oh. Everything about this book is a treat. I already know I'm going to have to buy my own copy so I can see how it will look on my own shelves because it is beautiful inside and out. Oh boy, Harrow has written something dark and light, complex and bonding. I am in completely enamored with her. And I'm probably going to have to go back and reread The Ten Thousand Doors of January now because her writing style is so completely her own. You will not find anything like it anywhere. Um, so if uh, I have sold you on the Once in Future Witches. Please come and check it out. We have it at the West Lincoln Public Library. You may have to wait a week. I am not going to let go of this easily. Not until I have a copy for myself. Because, 
Oh man. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I will see you all next month with another review. As always, if you have something you would love for me to take a look at, please let me know. I am always open to new suggestions. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everyone.